But joining us now is James Clapper. He served as the director of national intelligence for seven years under President Obama and is now a CNN national security analyst. Dr. Uh, director Clapper, it is so good to have you here during this breaking news because Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, some of their most active years were 2010 through 2017 when you were director of national intelligence. What do you think as you watch the arrest today at the behest of the United States? Well, I was, uh, of course, recalling uh, uh, the 2010 uh, era was, was right as I had started as uh, DNI and I ha and had to deal with uh, uh, the impact of the Chelsea Manning revelations, uh, which were quite uh, quite damaging, and uh, and it caused us all kinds of grief in the, in, in the intelligence community. I do think that um, Jeffrey Tubin, uh, I think as always, uh, articulated uh, the complexities of this case. And there is the uh, you know, freedom of the press aspect. I personally, and this is a, a legal, a personal opinion, not a legal opinion, think I'm in the, my Pompeo school that WikiLeaks is really a non-nation state um, hostile intelligence service. But that, I'm saying that as an intel guy mm -hmm. and having lived through uh, the grief that uh, those revelations caused. There is the comparison between uh, WikiLeaks and the likes of, say, the New York Times or the Washington Post. That's what WikiLeaks is making. I mean, they, well, they want to make that comparison. I, I, I recognize that. I, I will just point out uh, one subtle difference uh, from a practical standpoint is that when the New York Times, the likes of the New York Times or uh, uh, the Washington Post or any of the responsible media uh, came into possession of classified material, uh, typically, not always, but, but typically, they would at least give us, the intelligence community, the opportunity to comment and make the case for not public, uh, publishing something. Now, uh, I will say also, that, though, that th their definition of what uh, is harmful to national security and my definition of what's harmful yes. to national security what, were not exactly congruent. Look, these but are the conversations. Is, the important difference here, yeah. uh, Allison, is that at least we had the opportunity to make our case. And if someone's life was potentially at risk, responsible media would not publish that. Yes, these are conversation, hard conversations that are had in newsrooms around the country and the world all the time. But I'm curious, obviously all of us are curious to see what, when this is unsealed and we expect it to happen moments from now, what the charges are against Julian Assange. And it sounds like, if you believe his editor, we spoke to the WikiLeaks editor uh, a few minutes ago, that it's about the 2010 publication and revelations, that it's not about 2016. But of course, right. so much has changed since 2010 here in this country. And you will remember that President Trump said, I love WikiLeaks. He encouraged WikiLeaks. He hoped that WikiLeaks would publish more of the, from the DNC hack. He was quite sympathetic to WikiLeaks and a fan of WikiLeaks. And so what does that mean now for the court case back here at home now that President Trump is, is sympathetic to them? Well, you're right to point out what's changed since 2010, and uh, I don't know. And, and in fact, it it, uh, it makes the arrest at our behest apparently uh, even more curious. And obviously, uh, if if there's a, a court proceeding here, undoubtedly Assange's uh, attorneys are going to point that out. That uh, uh, you know, the president of the United States, uh, as a candidate, uh, he preys on on WikiLeaks. So I. I uh, again, I, I, I'm not an attorney. I don't know how that's going to complicate uh, the, the legal case that the United States government w would now make against uh, Assange. All right. We need you on standby because obviously we are waiting for those charges to be unsealed. We believe at any moment now. And so obviously I'll go back to that when that happens. In the meantime, I wanted to ask you about what we saw yesterday from the Attorney General, Bill Barr, in front of the Senate. You called it stunning and scary, those are your words, that Barr would, raise, would use the word spying. So can you tell me what was scary about that to you? Well, spying has a, uh, a term I've never liked. I never uh, liked that term being applied to me, <clears throat> even though I spent 50 years in the, in the intelligence business. It, uh, it has a bad connotation. It's a pejorative uh, term. 
it uh, smacks of illegality, uh, lack of oversight, uh, uh, all those kind of things. And th that wasn't the case here. I, my concern in all this, as it was when I served as DNI, was the Russians and what the Russians were doing. And the extent that there was surveillance of anyone, it, had to, it, it was occasioned by contacts with Russians who were uh, targets, validated foreign intelligence targets. And we sort of lost sight of that and, and, and the threat that the Russians posed, because that's how this all started, is the Russian meddling. So when the Attorney General, and I believe he used that term deliberately, uh, you know, he's been the Attorney General before, so he's, he's, he's not unfamiliar with, with all this. Uh, I thought it was, it was quite uh, stunning. Yeah. And uh, apparently uh, he's, uh, his concern is uh, more broadly to the intelligence community at large, not, not, uh, not just the FBI. So I'm very interested in what it is that, that gives him concern. Yeah, he was unclear. Uh, he did not expound on what gave him concern. It sounded like he was open to being concerned and he was going to wait to hear what the inspector general had to say. But I want to talk about how the, what you hear Republicans saying and the president is that they should have alerted, if there was an investigation, a counterintelligence investigation that involved the Trump campaign, oh. they should have alerted the Trump campaign. Now you were the person who in January of 2017, one of the people went to tell the then president elect that all of this was swirling around and he had already been alerted that Russians were trying to interfere in the campaign. And so should the campaign have known before that date that you went over there that there was an investigate, possibly a counterintelligence investigation involving some people connected to the campaign? Well, the, uh, I, I can't speak uh, specifically, Allison, to uh, what the FBI did. I, I believe, but I, I, I don't know for sure, but I believe they did give uh, kind of standard defensive briefings after the candidates were designated uh, after their respective conventions. Uh, when the two candidates emerged, uh, we started, as is customary, uh, uh, intelligence briefings for both candidates. But and should, th it those, those I mean, intelligence should it have gone deeper? Those intelligence briefings included uh, reporting on uh, the Russian meddling that was ongoing. Yeah. So when you hear different Republican lawmakers say, how dare they not alert the campaign that there was this counterintelligence uh, investigation, are they right or wrong? Well, I don't know what the uh, uh, decision calculus here was by the, by the FBI uh, contemporaneously. But I do know as a, as a general rule, with, with particularly with respect to a counterintelligence investigation, that when you start it, you want to be sure you're, who is potentially complicit and who isn't. And there is, uh, a, a, as a general uh, rule of thumb, you try to be as cloistered and, and uh, compartmented about uh, such investigations for all kinds of good reasons. So again, I don't know what the uh, decision calculus was at the time contemporaneously that the, the FBI used. It's my understanding they did give general uh, counterintelligence briefings specifically focused, I believe, on the Russians. Yeah, uh, it's good to get that context. Director James Clapper, keep your phone handy. We'll have you on speed dial as all of this unfolds. Thank you very much. Assange has been arrested in London about an hour and 10 minutes ago, taken into custody at the Ecuadorian embassy where he's been living in refuge since 2012. Police served Assange with a warrant dating back to 2012, but it's still unknown exactly what it's for. All right, Judge, you got to help us with this. It just broke 30 minutes ago. You're the guy who hosts Liberty File. I recognize you from the app, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Brandon, I have interviewed So he interviewed. was dragged out. We can't use the picture yet, but he was dragged out in cuffs. So he was dragged out because I, knowing him, and of course we all know him, I've interviewed it many times. Mm -hmm. He's of the belief that if he voluntarily went out or cooperated with them, he might be waiving his claim to an unlawful arrest. So they literally carried him out. He that is technically arrested on a bail jumping violation, which is a very, very because they got rid of the sexual assault in Sweden. Correct. But they didn't drop the case. They just rescinded the charges. So there's no basis to arrest him in London for the sexual assault investigation in in Sweden. 
He apparently has been charged with something in the United States we right. don't know because of this inadvertent release of a warrant for him. And that is probably the true reason for his arrest. He will probably be extradited here. We will see the indictment and we'll probably have a well, show trial. Judge, why wouldn't he just why wouldn't he just give himself up initially? And, and go to trial because he hasn't seen his family or his kids for all I, these years, knowing it's just delaying I have and to delaying. Tell you, I have to tell you, in my opinion, Julian Assange is a hero. What he published was truthful information that the American public and the world had the right to see. He's uh, a publisher, just like we are. Right. Judge, he, he does expose State Department secrets the world had no business seeing. When you, when you have private communiques with our officials, they should not be exposed or else we'll never have private communiques. I agree with you that that will diminish the, the private communications. But just as if we, working for Fox News, received secret mm -hmm. information, my God, the public has to know this. The person who gave it to us commits the crime. The publisher he, he, does not commit guilty, the crime. If he's guilty, will they use him as an example? I would think so. Uh, if he's, guilty I, don't, if he's guilty, I don't think he'll see the right. light of day again. So if he's brought to the United States... Um, you know, he's going to say, I, I can't answer questions about where I got this stuff because right. I'm protected by your First Amendment. Correct. So I'm not going to tell you how I got Hillary Clinton's emails, right. but I got them and we published them. Right. Ecuador, by the way, said the, the Ecuador president said, we'll only put you into British custody if you promise not to release him to a third party. It might be, wor it might be just his word that he got from Britain. We'll see what happens. I don't think that promise is enforceable, bro. Okay. All Meanwhile, right. thir uh, 13 minutes before the bottom of the hour, let's change gears. Top of the hour. Uh, Bill Barr yesterday said spying did occur on the campaign of Donald Trump. The big question, though, Judge, and we've already seen the soundbite, is whether or not the protocols were in place where the Department of Justice followed the rules or did somebody break them? Okay, so two things. There's another big question. Who did the spying? If the intelligence community, American or foreign, was involved, I don't think we'll ever find out about this. They simply will not let it come to light. When President Trump offered last year to reveal all the FISA information that Strzok and McCabe and those characters gave to the, the world FISA. The went crazy. Court. Correct. He was talked out of it. By whom? By intelligence agencies, domestic that work for him uh, and foreign. The other question, the one Steve raised, is intriguing. If they gave garbage information to FISA and FISA gave them a warrant, it is a valid warrant, and the spying, I hate to say this, the spying was lawful. That, then, is on the fault of the judge who accepted the garbage, mm -hmm. who didn't look at it critically. But it's got to be who verified. Didn't, it didn't ask questions about that it. That garbage has to be verified. Yes. And, and that's what the attorney general said right. when he said, is there a predicate? Right. He meant, was there valid lawful evidence given to these judges, or was it garbage? If the British helped our intelligence agency spy on the Trump administration and they don't expose that, it's going to happen again because they're not going to back off. They want Trump out. Do you really want to open up that can of worms again? I yes, got, what you say... I got a can opener. I'm right. willing to use what, it. What you say is absolutely correct, Brian. And Thank if you. a foreign intelligence agency did help the FBI spy on President Trump, we'll never know. Right. That's a big if. Yes. I know right. we've, we've covered well, that. Now, crap. Right. You, and, you and I covered it. <laughs> we did. That was right. two years no. ago. No, that was you. <laughs> All right. I took the heat. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> Judge has Liberty File on Fox Nation. Thank you, Judge, for we'll being here. We'll be watching. Pleasure, guys. Hello. He's Thank looking at spending an awful long time in prison now, isn't he? Well, we don't know. I mean, it depends if the extradition is uh, successful. If it is, then it could be a life imprisonment, yes. Okay. Mind uh, you, you should add. Know... Uh, Go on. Yeah, well, one should add that he's actually uh, not had any liberty for about 10 years now. So, um, you know, he has uh, certainly suffered. Um, and, you know, the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention um, ha did determine that he was arbitrarily detained. So he has had 10 years so far of, uh, of, of, of a compromised freedom. Well, that was arbitrarily dismissed, of course, by the uh, British government. They didn't appreciate that at all. Well, no. Um, well, go on. no they didn't. They didn't, but they should have, I would argue. I mean, because, um, you know, the, the, the UN is the highest authority um, on this one. So, you know, in the world. So, you know, perhaps their decision should have been listened to. Yeah, uh, of course, he did uh, choose to skip bail, which is an offence here in the United Kingdom for which he has been found guilty this afternoon. Uh, yes, and he received um, uh, diplomatic asylum, which has been revoked, probably illegally, I understand, um, by the Ecuadorians. Okay, so you think that it was acceptable for him to have skipped bail, even though 
the charges that he was facing at that potential charges he was facing at that time were in relation to serious sexual offences in Sweden and nothing to do with WikiLeaks um, or otherwise in the United States. That's just simply not true. Um, uh, he, he was very clear, and many journalists wouldn't accept it, that he was going there to escape exactly what has now happened to him. Um, he claimed asylum, he received asylum, um, and um, he was saying it's because he didn't want to be extradited to the States, and that's exactly what appears to be happening now. Um, the Swedish matter, by the way, um, please note that the um, Crown Prosecution Service um, were revealed to have um, uh, encouraged this Swedish prosecutor not to actually prosecute. He was never charged with anything. Essentially, you had our prosecution service and the Swedish uh, prosecution, uh, prosecution service not prosecuting. So I, I think there's funny business that's been going on. What are, you su Ali, uh, what are you suggesting? What are you alleging? What I'm suggesting is that I, there wasn't a desire. I've been sorry, I've been quite clear. I was being very clear that. Um, uh, you know, if, if the prosecutors aren't prepared to prosecute, why would we take that prosecution or, you know, the, the, the allegation seriously? Um, the, the Swedish prosecutor wouldn't come to London to interview Julian, which they, they were quite happy to do for... No, no, no. Uh, and in addition to that, there was no desire to prosecute. Um, uh, and uh, the La Repubblica, a, an Italian newspaper, um, you can look this up, um, did a freedom of information uh, request in Sweden and, and was able to retrieve emails that the Crown Prosecution Service had destroyed, um, which it discouraged the Swedes from... Anyway, they've dropped that. I mean, what's happening now is, is nothing to do with Sweden. OK, so it is, you, uh, you are suggesting, everything to do with WikiLeaks in the United States. Why do you feel that he doesn't have a case to answer? No, I, I, I'm not saying that there's no... What do you mean, about the Swedish stuff or the American stuff? No, the American stuff. Well, I mean, the, you know, the, the, yes, I mean, there, there's an indictment that was published um, and they wish to extradite him. Now, now, whether, you know, I'm not sure that people in this country um, are necessarily happy to see an extradition on this basis. Um, you know, it looks, this is really, uh, you know, spiteful, self-interested politics. I mean, uh, yes, we're, we should be fine um, extraditing murderers and, 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 and people who are bank robbers and people like that. But this is about Julian revealing the truth about a, a foreign government, um, uh, uncomfortable truths about the foreign government. This is a completely different thing. Uh, this is really a vendetta. It's revenge by the Americans on Julian. They want to set an example of him. And, you know, we all really know that. But the allegation is not about publishing uh, these, um, these WikiLeaks, though, is it? It's more uh, to do with um, conspiracy with Chelsea Manning, uh, then Bradley Manning, uh, to commit computer intrusion, to hack government servers. Is that not your understanding? Um, I think what they have done, um, and that is what it, what it reads like, um, they've been struggling to find something they can get him on. But it's, it's, it's not really to do about that. It's to set an example of him. Um, you know, what the Russians do is they, um, they kill people in Salisbury. And um, what the Americans want to do in this instance, to discourage other people from revealing information that's uncomfortable to them, the truth, um, and this is what they do. They want to put him in jail for, for the rest of his life. Yeah, it might be uncomfortable, but it's potentially also illegal if he did conspire to uh, commit computer intrusion to hack government servers. That's yeah, well, um, illegal. They, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will have to prove that, um, but I've just said I don't but believe that's to, what it's about. They have to prove it in a court of law, uh, and in yes. order to do that, he needs to face those allegations, doesn't he? Um, no, I don't believe so. I don't think we should be so gullible. Um, uh, you know, the, look, the reason people like me stand behind Julian Assange is because at the heart of it, WikiLeaks was a project that says in a free democracy that people have the right to information about their ruling elite acts and behave. You know, Julian threatened most powerful people in the world with exposure. Um, ordinary people, who, 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 thanks to Julian and WikiLeaks, uh, ordinary people now understand a lot more about the cynicism and corruption. But it's about how you access that information, surely? All right, well, look, this, this thing goes back to the Afghan war logs and the diplomatic cables um, eight years ago eight to ten years ago. Um, and now, it's quite clear that while this has been going on, um, Obama thought, OK, this probably doesn't stand up, he's a publisher, um, and decided not to do it, and let Chelsea Manning out of jail after four years. Chelsea Manning is now back in jail. Clearly, what Trump wants is a sort of a, a trophy show trial before 2020 election. Uh, you can't hack government uh, servers or well, who, who, with someone else to commit... <laughs> Uh, Hang on, this is our government. Okay, this is our finish government. my question and then you can answer it. Is that possible? 
You no, cannot. Of it's it is illegal. Thank you. It is illegal to hack government servers uh, or uh, to conspire with someone else in order to do that. That is illegal. So um, that is the charge that is likely to be. No, put hang on. To hang on. You're, you're, you're talking about something that needs to be tested in the courts, frankly. Of course. Um, and and no. wait, look, you, you course. sound like the American government is our government. It's not our government. Um, this is a foreign government. It's a foreign state. I mean, if it was Russia, if if Julian had um, maybe, but it's not Russia. Um, it, but doesn't matter. It's America. It's a foreign state. We seem to act as if America has the right to pull people from our country just because they don't like them. And you're talking. No. Uh, if there's a certainty, no, but they have they have they have a, a, an ability to ask our government to extradite somebody that they feel needs to answer these allegations in a court of law. That's okay. what America is asking Please. us Would to do. Would we pull somebody out of an embassy who's got asylum for the Russian government or just the American government? That, surely that's, that's, that's a nebulous argument. Why? Because the American government have asked us specifically whether we can uh, provide uh, information from, well, provide this gentleman to, to them via video link to see whether there is a case to answer. Why is that not acceptable? Um, it's not acceptable because we know what's going on here. It's not acceptable because we wouldn't do it for other governments. It's, you know, we, we, we have extremely weak extradition laws with, with the United States of America. Um, and, uh, you know, Julian has been uh, in all the supernatural bodies, for example, the um, intra-American um, Court of Human Rights has judged in his favor that he was an asylum, you know, he, he received asylum have been entitled to it. Um, Ecuador has been pressured by the Americans and us um, and, uh, you know, simply to um, do America's bidding. Um, and I'm, I'm, look, I think, you know, Julian is somebody who has brought forward um, the whole debate about transparency in a way that was incredibly important. Um, and I, I know he needs to be able to participate in that. Um, and this is, just, this is just bullying. This is sort of uh, victimizing him. This is, uh, you know, taking out on Julian. Um, and because he's threatened most powerful people with the world with, with exposure. He must not be extradited to the United States. It would be absolutely scandalous if that happened.